see you again. I feel like I haven't seen you for ages. Or maybe it's just been a whole week. But it's so nice to be together again so we can look at God's word, we can learn more, we can understand more about who Jesus is and what he came to do. Now today, we're going to do something that involves clues. Do you know what clues are? Clues are little hints or words that help us understand a bigger picture. That sounds tricky. Let's try something different. I'm going to get you something and I'm going to give you some clues about what I'm going to pull out. First clue, it's orange. That could be anything. Second clue, it's an animal. Third clue, it's got nose and an eyes. <gasps> Did any of you maybe guess it as a Tigger right from the beginning? Say hello, Tigger. Uh, those were maybe not the best clues, but clues can help us. Let's try it again. Okay, I'm just gonna have to get something out of my bag. Uh, okay, this one swims in the sea. Thinking, uh, it's yellow and blue. It's famous in a very old movie. And it's, oh, it's a flounder. Did you get the clues? Did you understand what the clues were trying to tell you? And who they were trying to tell you about? Okay, last one. This one is, is probably a bit tricky. The other two were from movies and cartoons. This one is real life. No, I don't have a real life animal. But I have something that had spikes on its back and a long tail. And it lived many years ago. And it was brown and green. <gasps> Did you guess a Stegosaurus from the clues that you saw and you heard? Did you think I was going to bring out a Stegosaurus? Well, those are fun animals and cartoon characters. And when we get the clues and we listen to the questions I ask and we look with our eyes, we put all the clues together and we go, ah, that's who it was. Now today we're going to do something similar when we read the Bible. So just now, we're going to look at the Bible and hear a story about the disciples having to see the clues that Jesus gave them to figure out who Jesus is. So look for the clues that the disciples get, listen carefully to what Jesus is going to say, and think to yourself, why did the disciples not seem to understand? Okay, so we are going to do that when we get into the Bible. But before we read the Bible, we always pray. So let's pray together. Father, please help us as we read your word to see who Jesus is. Please change our hearts so that we can know who Jesus is and love him. Amen. Now for the next few lessons, we're going to be doing a little bit of what I call the Bible wiggle. Okay, you ready? Loosen up your arms. So the Bible comes from God to us. So put your hand, both hands up comes to God to us, we get to see it with both eyes, and we get to hear it with both ears, and it goes into our mind and we understand, but most importantly, it also changes our heart. So take a moment, let's see if you can make a good heart. There you go. God's word comes from God, is for our eyes and our ears, changes our minds, but most importantly, changes our hearts. Right, we're going to look at Mark chapter 6, verse 45, and we're going to see what Jesus was doing. Now, lots of the stories in the Gospels start with Jesus and a crowd. Jesus is teaching a crowd of people. He just actually fed that crowd of people. But now it's coming to the end of the day and he's getting a little bit tired. So Jesus says, crowd, you guys must go away now. It's time for you to go home, go, go eat some food at home, go be at home. Jesus is going up onto the mountainside to pray. So we need a mountainside, a nice green grassy mountainside. And this mountainside was next to, oh, that looks like a clip. Works. Next to a lake. So Jesus goes away from the crowd up onto the mountainside to pray. But the crowd was sent away, but not his disciples. So the disciples are sent out onto the boat, on the boat, onto the water. 
Now, many of them had been fishermen, so this was not a completely new thing for them to do. But today, oh, it was tough. And they'd gone out when the sun was up. Let me find my son. My son doesn't want to leave my other pictures. They'd gone up when the sun was up. The sun had gone over. The sun had gone down. My goodness, this is a long day for them on the boat. And it was actually nighttime. And they were battling. In fact, the Bible says, Jesus saw the disciples pulling hard at the oars. The wind was blowing against them. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them. He walked on the lake. When he was about to pass him, they saw him walking on the lake. They thought he was a ghost, so they cried out. They all saw him, and they were terrified. Show me your best terrified face. Jesus is walking on the water towards them. But wait a minute. Earlier in Mark's Gospel, Jesus had been in a boat with these men during a storm. And he'd stood up and he'd said, be quiet. And the storm had gone quiet. They're going, what? This man, he can make the storm quiet? He can walk on water? Who is this? Now Jesus knew the men were absolutely terrified. Show me that terrified face. So he did what everyone does to calm someone who's terrified. He spoke. And the words he spoke were very important. Jesus said, it is I, which we know as I am. I am, wait a moment. Someone else uses that word to describe themselves. God used that word to Moses when the bush was burning. And he said, Moses, I am. Now Jesus is saying, I am. Wait a minute. Does this mean Jesus is God? He's got power over the wind and the waves. And when he talks, he says, I am. He says to the disciples, don't be afraid. And he climbs into the boat with them. The wind dies down. The sun comes up. And the disciples go from terrified to amazed. Wow! Look at what had happened. We struggled all night. And then Jesus comes and he walks on water to us. And then he tells us who he is. And wow! The disciples were amazed. They had seen the clues that Jesus had shown them in his words, in his walking on the water, and they had realized this man is amazing. Now, Jesus says these words and helps the disciple, and then they all get to the land, and guess what? Another crowd comes to join them, because everybody always wants to hear what Jesus says. And everybody always wants to hear Jesus healing, see Jesus healing people and teaching people and feeding people. And they know this must be someone special. Now, I want you to give a little wriggle. Let's see, what did we learn earlier? That God's word comes from God. We see it with our eyes. We hear it with our ears. It changes our mind and it changes our hearts. So what had the disciples seen and heard? They'd seen Jesus walking on the water. Only God can do that. They'd heard Jesus calling him, saying God's name, I am. Only God can do that. Where's, he, where's his name? Never. And they look at him and they realize Jesus must be God. And it doesn't just stay in their minds. It goes into their hearts and changes their hearts. Their hearts are changed from terrified to amazed. Only God can do that. Now, maybe you're thinking, how do I get God's word to change my heart? Well, we read it. That's the best way to do it. We pray before we read, and God helps us to understand it. And we also think, 
maybe I know some people who don't know about Jesus. Maybe they haven't heard. Maybe they haven't seen. Maybe I should tell them. Maybe I should pray for them. So we know that our hearts are changed because God does it through the power of his Holy Spirit. Right, let's close our eyes and pray. Thank, thank you, Father, that we can know you. Please change our hearts so that we can know and love you more and more and see you as we read your word. Amen. Right, now why don't you go this week and read some more of the stories in Mark and see what you see, see the clues you can find about who Jesus is and what he's done. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.